Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to our session today. We have a really exciting session for you, as always. Um, I see people are still joining, so I'll give it about a minute or two. Uh, so if you need to go to the restroom or get yourself some water, right now is the perfect time. And we'll start at 3.02. Thank you. Okay, welcome everybody. We have a really exciting session for you today. Um, we're going to be discussing uh, refining flexibility and rigidity of fully and semi-integral abutments. For anybody who is new to our sessions or new to our company, we are a subsidiary company of Midas IT and we develop a total solution service for bridge building geotechnical and a mechanical engineer. Um, if anybody is new to this platform um, or hasn't used it in a while, there was an update uh, earlier this year, so I just want to go through it really quick. Um, in the middle, you'll have the presentation screen. If there are any cameras activated like there are right now, you'll see them at the top. Um, and then any settings, any quick settings that you need to update can be found using the buttons at the bottom. Using the hand raise icon on the bottom left, you can not only get our attention by raising your hand, but you can also react to the session at any point. You can use the question box at the top right to submit any questions to the speaker or if you have any questions about um, MIDAS itself or anything that you would like to submit, you can do so through there. And then any more in-depth settings you can use the little gear icon um, and toggle with your microphone or speaker or anything like that um, so i'm going to go ahead and introduce our speaker today we have mohammed who is an engineering manager working for parsons bridge division in vancouver office he has over 25 years of experience in bridge engineering in bangladesh canada and the united states his work experience has focused on pre-stressed and post-tension concrete girder bridges, steel plate and box girder straight and curved bridges, precast segmental concrete extra dose and steel plate girder cable stayed bridges, and three-dimensional finite element modeling. His expertise is in analysis design, detailing erection, evaluation, load rating, rehabilitation, and construction of bridge structures. He has successfully delivered complex bridge projects in less than the anticipated budget while maintaining a high quality standard. He is experienced in the conceptual preliminary and detailed design of short to long span concrete and steel bridges. His innovative design solutions has significantly saved construction and maintenance costs. He achieved his master's degree from McGill University in Quebec, Canada, and he is a licensed professional engineer in the provinces of Alberta, British Columbia, and the state of Washington. He is the author and reviewer of numerous technical papers in, uh, on bridges and structural design. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and make you the presenter. You should be able to share your screen, Mohammed. Thank you so much, Luciana, for nice intro. Uh, I'll 
me turn off my camera during present for a smooth slide as a presentation and then back later but now let me just share this first can you see full screen yes okay excellent Thank you again, uh, Luciana, for uh, giving me an opportunity to share um, you know, this presentation with you. Uh, redefining flexibility, rigidity of fully and semi-integral abutments. Actually, this presentation first um, presented uh, 2022 uh, at Short and Medium Eastern Bridge uh, Conference uh, in Toronto. Uh, still, it is two year old, but the concept or the um, uh, content of the presentation is always new. So I hope you will enjoy the presentation and it will be applicable in your uh, daily uh, design task. So agenda of the presentation is introduction and background, uh, traditional and isolated apartments, various pile foundation, structural behavior and flexibility stiffness and strength of piles result and discussion on case studies definition of integral apartment bridges by the code uh, consequence of unclear code definition example of integral apartment bridge without code specified piles and finally conclusion and recommendation so introduction and background the abutments are major components of bridge structure. Traditional abutments are mainly classified as fully integral, semi-integral, and conventional. In recent years, a new type of isolated abutment has been developed and built in Vancouver, BC. Integral abutment bridges eliminate expansion joints, therefore known as a jointless bridge. IBs are less expensive and almost maintenance-free. IBs are becoming more popular day by day. First IBs was built in 1920 in Colorado, USA, and the longest IB also built in uh, Colorado, USA. So now look at the traditional apartment types. So basically three traditional apartment types we use, fully integral, semi-integral, and conventional. So fully integral is basically all the superstructure, substructure, uh, and the foundation are integrally connected. With the full integral abutment, we have to have a single line of pile to allow more flexibility. And that is the fundamental requirement uh, of the full integral abutment. So pile could be within the casing or without casing, depend upon uh, the uh, soil movement. But most of the cases we need uh, casing <coughs> to allow uh, the deformation of the pile. When the loads are very high, the spans are a little bit longer, a single line, line of pile may not work. In that case, we have to go with the double line of pile, or in that case, um, we have to have a, uh, a bearing top of that, because when you go with the double line of pile, it, the behavior does not work as a um, full integral because uh, of the um, pull and push of the double line of pile. So we, we introduce the um, bearing to allow the rotation. Uh, so that is a um, uh, semi-integral abutment. We call it semi-integral abutment. And then the conventional abutment, which is basically <clears throat> the old days um, bridges, uh, a multi-line of pile uh, with bearing and the um, expansion joint. And this expansion joint basically caused a lot of problem to infiltrate uh, water um, uh, through the, um, that expansion joint to the bearing and the substructure. So, uh, but probably some cases we cannot avoid this one. So we have to have uh, the conventional uh, abutment bridge, uh, but uh, for um, uh, short span bridge or up to, uh, to around 200 meter long um, bridges with multiple span, we can uh, go with the fully integral abutment bridge. So another uh, abutment is recently um, introduced in BC, Vancouver, uh, and we call it um, isolated abut in, uh, abutment bridge and for integral, uh, cases it is we can call it isolated integral abutment bridges as you see at the at the top um, uh, there is a traditional integral abutment bridges where um, the piles are um, inside of the MSU wall 
that means <clears throat> we need a longer span to have the for example 40 meter clear width but if we want to um, keep the same clear width 40 meter we can reduce the span just to bring the uh, pile uh, call it as a uh, isolated abutment or typical pier in front of the msu wall uh, and the traditional approach slab we can call it as a jump span or jump slab uh, because we have to have uh, design of the approach slab as a simply supported case without considering any soil support underneath. So design wise is the same, but we can have some advantage uh, um, if we choose the isolated integral abutment. Only the problem is we, we are losing the, uh, the uh, restraint of the soil uh, during the um, uh, longitudinal uh, movement in seismic cases. But in that case, uh, the fundamental assumption uh, the uh, embankment must not be must not be call offs uh, so that we can allow the uh, restraint by the embankment. Um, uh, but if we go with the isolated, uh, we cannot use that uh, soil restraining effect. But other than that, we have some um, significant advantage. In the next slide, we'll see the advantage between uh, two uh, uh, abutments. Uh, isolated abutment versus the <coughs> traditional uh, integral abutment. On the left side, you see the uh, traditional uh, integral abutment. On the right side is the uh, isolated uh, integral abutment. Uh, and the advantages are uh, no back wall required, uh, no wing wall required, uh, reduce span length, as we see in the previous slide, uh, reduce weight. So when you reduce the span, we reduce the weight. When there is no wing wall, we reduce the weight of the um, uh, abutment. Uh, reduce the number of pile. As the weight reduced, number of pile also reduced. Uh, provide extra space. So this space can be used as a uh, walkway or for the maintenance vehicle. Uh, reduce approach field. So we don't need the approach field dislocation. So that is reduce the cost. Uh, avoid constant, uh, construction overlap. So that means uh, the bridge and the um, uh, approach can be constructed uh, without uh, depending on each other. Uh, increased performance definitely it provide a bit better performance than the traditional one and um, and overall um, it reduce the uh, life cycle cost and easy to inspect so for example if we um, <clears throat> go for the um, design for the uh, seismic design and if we allow the plastic hinge here it cannot be inspected so basically uh, in ground uh, hinging is not recommended by the mini court. So in that case, the isolated apartment, uh, we can easily inspect it, uh, allow the plastic hinge here. So that is one of the uh, another advantage. So we can easily inspect and uh, and repair. So now we talk about a little bit about the detail of the jump span. Jump span is nothing but a typical approach slab. Uh, so for um, a small movement, we can use the thermo joint. Uh, this, uh, it is supported one side on the uh, abutment, or we call it typical pier um, bend, and the other side is the slipper slab. And for the large movement, we can use the transflex um, uh, seismic joint, like a steel plate and the modular rubber. So it's allow superstructure to move transversely and longitudinally to improve seismic performance. So uh, this is option one. Option two, we, the similar thing, but we can uh, allow to kick off this. Uh, um, as, um, uh, approach slab or the jump span so that we can uh, get some uh, energy um, disruption here. So that is another um, advantage of this one. So for uh, service load uh, or service expansion and contraction, we can use a um, joint seal here. Uh, but for the large movement in seismic event, we can allow to kick off the um, jump span. Now we look at the various pile foundation for integral abutment. So first is the HP pile, which is very commonly used for uh, for um, small um, span bridges, uh, which is like a <clears throat> HP pile, uh, different size, um, 360, 120, 360, 152, and <clears throat> 174, and um, uh, one feet diameter of unfilled steel tube. Currently, uh, the Canadian code uh, 614 and 619 only restricted to use this pile for integral abutment bridges. 
And then uh, in BC, we commonly use the 610 uh, or 2 feet, uh, 914, 3 feet diameter concrete fill steel tube, uh, which is very popular by the contractor and the, um, and the client uh, or the um, MOT. And uh, another option is the um, board pile. It's a concrete board pile. So for example, 750, one meter or 1250 diameter cast in place uh, reinforced concrete uh, board pile. And all cases, the pile uh, can be encased with the um, uh, casing. So for example, we can use the uh, CSP uh, casing and fill with the styrofoam beads. Very, this is very typical. For the large diameter of pile, we can also use the um, uh, concrete manhole pipe uh, and the styrofoam bead to allow the movement of the pile. So this is the example uh, of the uh, casing and construction steps, integral abutment uh, bridges and approaches. Most of you are familiar with this, just try to refresh the mind. Uh, so excavate approaches, um, drive and drill piles, uh, install casing, fill styrofoam beads, uh, install MAC wall in layer, uh, install uh, strap in uh, layer, fill approaches in layer, uh, compact fill in layer, and then repeat the step five to eight. Uh, as needed. So this is the um, uh, HP pile uh, <coughs> uh, with the CSP casing. And the bottom one is the uh, concrete pile with the um, uh, concrete uh, manhole um, pipe uh, to um, provide some uh, movement. Uh, <coughs> So this is the fundamentals of um, uh, of the um, uh, simply supported bridge, fully um, uh, fixed end bridge, and the in integral bridge. So on the left side, this is simply supported bridges uh, bridge. Um, uh, so uh, it is um, uh, in place, um, and the supports are always uh, free to rotate. We don't have any movement, so all the um, uh, we don't have any uh, moment, but we can allow the the movement uh, at one end and uh, the uh, friction we, we cannot find any frictionless bearing so we, there is some uh, friction of course so that's why we'll see some kind of actual force effect but those are very very minimum uh, but on the fixed end uh, bridge uh, the all these um, actual force are restrained in theory uh, so we'll develop a huge amount of actual force on the superstructure but we have to uh, allow this um, movement during the thermal effect. So uh, we cannot restrain that movement, uh, otherwise we'll uh, develop a huge amount of axial force and uh, the stru superstructure um, um, can be uh, cracked. So the way we handle this one, like a kind of uh, um, um, vertical breathing of the structure or um, horizontal breathing of the structure. We'll see some example later, uh, or we can um, make the pile uh, flexible. That's why the, in, the, in the middle, uh, we, uh, there is a uh, free body for this one, integral abutment base. So basically this KT is the translational uh, stiffness of the, of the pile that basically allow the translational movement. So basically it is the balance between um, simply supported and the fixed end and bridge. And uh, this has to be basically tuned to uh, get the uh, effect uh, to allow the movement as well as the, uh, as the demand of the um, uh, pile, um, flexural demand basically of the pile. So this is a, a example of a uh, rigid integral abutment bridge. Uh, it is basically the arch bridge, but it is also a rigid integral abutment bridge. That means the, our abutments are fully rigid. It cannot allow the thermal movement. So high, where the thermal movement will uh, go? So basically when it is an arch effect, it basically breathes in vertical direction. Uh, so this is a very beautiful bridge um, designed by Robert Saylor, completed in uh, 1959, almost 65 years old bridge, but looks uh, brand new. Uh, I had a chance to visit this bridge uh, before last year. Uh, and uh, this is uh, one of the uh, um, example for the uh, rigid integral abutment bridge where the movement can allow in vertical direction. And this is another example of the um, uh, uh, rigid integral bridge, but in this case, the horizontal, uh, the movement, thermal movement accommodated in horizontal direction. This bridge was designed by Matthias Schuller. Uh, and it was completed in 2001. It is located in Stuttgart, uh, Germany. Uh, and the bridge length is uh, around 119 meter um, and the radius is uh, 
uh, very um, tight, so 53.7 meter. You see this bridge is uh, the pedestrian bridge, and um, you see the piers are very slender. Uh, so only the load carried by the abutment and the pier carrying the vertical load and allow that uh, transverse movement or thermal effect uh, horizontally. So now this is the fundamental behavior uh, uh, um, and flexibility of the integral abutment bridges. So um, so we have to have the uh, back um, backfill soil if we go to traditional uh, abut integral abutment bridges and then um, back wall is supported by the um, uh, compression only abutment spring uh, and uh, during the um, expansion uh, the soil moves and it creates some kind of permanent uh, gap uh, and um, that um, gap allowed to movement uh, in summer uh, and um, but uh, if the movement is more than the gap then the soil engaged with the uh, abut back wall and that's why we use only the compression only abutment spring during modeling the piles are has to be modeled with the tension compression spring because the uh, when it is a uh, the soil cannot take the tension but other side of the pile take the compression that's why we can use compression uh, tension spring in one side uh, that is the modeling approach we'll discuss later so this is the free body for the model one, which is basically happening uh, during um, the winter. That means uh, when bridge contract, there is no soil acting behind the soil uh, abutment. Uh, but when it is summer, then this um, soil is activated as a abutment spring. And in seismic event, if we design this bridge to allow the plastic hinge at this location, but many duties or the um, owners do not allow the in-ground plastic hinge. But for uh, argument, if we go with the plastic hinge here, that means the Model 3, basically, the, we have uh, like a, a single curvature. So in that case, uh, in seismic event, we can, by hand calculation, we can calculate the pe uh, period and the, um, and the base shear. Um, for uh, preliminary design uh, of the uh, abutment, uh, integral abutment bridge. Uh, this is the example for the um, uh, pile and abutment spring. So we need to model uh, the pile uh, with this um, pile spring. So this is the example for uh, a pile spring from L pile analysis, but the MIDAS has a good feature uh, and built in feature. You we can also uh, develop the um, uh, pile spring from there, but we'll discuss uh, later. Uh, but for simplicity, I personally prefer to go with the um, uh, bilinear curve instead of the multilinear curve. That saves a lot of time in modeling. Uh, so we can convert this um, uh, multilinear curve to the bilinear curve. Uh, and then we can model is, um, uh, the pile with a constant spring, but most of the cases, the upper around, say, for example, three to five meter, uh, the pile may deform more than this point. So in that case, we need a couple of iteration, but below that, the pile will um, remain um, within this range. For example, in this 25 meter depth, uh, the, um, the movement will be remaining in this range. So in that case, we don't need to model the pile um, um, for bilinear or multilinear spring um, to uh, reduce the extra task and reduce the uh, runtime of the model. Uh, so this is the um, uh, about the pile spring and the for the abutment spring. Uh, usually we can we use the compression only about abutment spring with gap and without gap. So most of the cases we'll get the final result uh, from the geotechnical engineer, but uh, it takes some time. So uh, before getting the result, we can start our work. So, so that the structural engineer can start our work uh, before getting the numbers from the geotechnical engineer. Uh, so we can say, for example, use this number. This is the um, uh, from the current uh, Caltrans manual. So we can use the abutment spring for a different type of gap uh, and then model, uh, model the pile. And we can also do some um, our uh, alpine analysis and get this curve and then start our work and then finalize the numbers when we'll get the uh, formal uh, geotechnical report. Uh, now talk about the stiffness and the strength of the pile that is heavily impacted uh, in the integral abutment bridges. Uh, so uh, the flexibility is a relative term. So when, when, when we talk about the abutment um, has to be flexible, 
so it is basically the uh, relatives for example for example uh, you see this uh, currently in the canadian code restricted only these piles uh, has to be used for fully integral abutment bridges uh, so hp pile and the one feet diameter uh, unfilled concrete steel pile so you see the um, the stiffness is uh, very uh, quickly reduced so it is inversely proportional uh, flexibility is inversely proportional to the stiffness and translational stiffness uh, significantly reduce um, with freestanding height. So this is the freestanding free height. So basically, when we provide the casing, we can consider this is a freestanding height. So you see around eight to ten meter of uh, the depth, uh, it becomes plateau. Uh, so basically, if we go the um, bigger diameter or uh, heavy um, uh, high stiffness uh, uh, pile, that gives us a strength, but it also reduce the um flexibility very quickly uh, or reduce the stiffness very quickly when we uh, make it a freestanding height uh, but on uh, on the other hand if we increase the freestanding height our compression capacity significantly reduced for example in the hp pile the compression capacity reduced uh, uh, almost 60 percent if we go uh, freestanding height of eight meter so that is that is uh, also a design challenge so basically we have to uh, make a uh, balance between the uh, the flexibility and the strength uh, so <clears throat> that is the one of the uh, major uh, requirement for designer uh, to look at the provide the flexibility as well as uh, to have the strength uh, to make it work so this is a design example check for the hp pile i think uh, as to has a similar procedure so we have to check um, the pile capacity uh, for the compression and uh, bilinear um, bending. So I'm not. I'll not go detail in this uh, formula, but this is a very much common uh, formula from the court for the uh, um, <clears throat> compact section and the um, um, flexible section. Uh, so Masto uh, has a similar uh, kind of approach. So impact of corrosion. So if we go with the HP pile, so our um, capacity. Uh, significantly reduce uh, definitely flexibility increases but the capacity is more concerned uh, in the lifetime of the structure uh, because we initially we designed based on the capacity uh, flexibility provided but if the capacity reduced uh, in 100 year lifetime of the structure and that is that is a big concern so um, we have to consider the uh, corrosion loss uh, during um, designing of the HP pile. So I presented here the percent a millimeter corrosion per face, uh, and then uh, presented you see the 49% reduction of the compression capacity uh, in the strong axis and the 57% reduction in the weak axis for the uh, for the HP pile. <clears throat> I presented here only for one uh, 360 and 174 uh, section, but other cases is the same. example of check uh, the concrete pile which is very much um, straightforward uh, we can uh, do the section analysis, analysis using uh, uh, any software Midas has its uh, own tools uh, to um, design the section analysis i have done it using the um, um, the response 2000 so this is an example for uh, a 16 uh, pile with casing uh, with steel pile and without steel pile, and this is a 914 uh, with uh, steel pile without steel um, uh, without steel pile. <coughs> and you see the uh, the capacity bending uh, axial and uh, flexural capacity increases uh, significantly uh, when you introduce the uh, steel um, pile. Now we have done some case study. Uh, to uh, compare the results so we use um, seven type of model um, single span to uh, four span up to uh, 200 meter length with uh, a new girder precast a new girder uh, and steel plate girder as well so uh, this is type m1 uh, where i use the um, yeah, 2000 new girder uh, with a steel <coughs> single line of uh, hp pile and this is m3 type m3 uh, we have uh, used the um, uh, 2.8 meter a new girder with a single line of cip board pile <coughs> 1000 meter 
and the uh, in type M4 uh, steel plate girder and uh, one meter diameter um, steel uh, concrete board pile. And now this is very inter interesting result to compare. So uh, stiffness uh, uh, and the comparison capacity of different pile for 15 meter wide uh, abutment. Uh, for 15 meter wide abutment uh, bridges, we need uh, this is the number of pile we can accommodate maximum. And then um, if we compare with this pile. Uh, with the stiffness and capacity, if we see uh, here the um, uh, HP pile uh, is um, 36174, uh, we we can accommodate maximum 13 pile with 15 meter wide abutment, uh, uh, and then if we see the stiffness is uh, uh, for all piles 50.48 kilonewton per mi uh, millimeter, and the actual capacity is 55.74. But if we compare uh, this um, um, type 3, pile ID type 3 with the uh, type 8, uh, with one meter diameter pile, we can accommodate maximum um, five uh, uh, pile based on the uh, three pile diameter rule of thumb. And uh, we consider 50% uh, crack section for the concrete pile. And then you see almost similar stiffness we can get. So 50.48 versus 50.48. Uh, two four kilonewton per millimeter, but the actual capacity is almost double. So uh, we can definitely argue that um, the uh, HP pile is not only a solution to provide the flexibility. We can uh, use the concrete pile uh, to get the similar flexibility, but with a higher capacity. The beauty of the concrete is when it cracks, uh, uh, it provides the flexibility without losing the uh, actual capacity. Now the geotechnical capacity and the cost of the pile. Uh, see, this is the comparison with the HP pile versus one meter diameter of the concrete bore pile. Uh, we have a significant high uh, capacity um, and um, the uh, uh, pile deformation also, uh, pile head uh, depth from the um, uh, top to the uh, end of the pile, lateral soil spring is also varied like this, but in HP pile, Compared to the concrete pile, uh, uh, we can um, uh, compare roughly 40% cheaper than the than, than the HP pile. So concrete is uh, cheaper, uh, so we can get um, cheaper pile with a similar flexibility, uh, with almost um, similar or higher capacity. Uh, but again, uh, this depends upon the site condition, uh, which pile is appropriate for which location. Uh, this is some of the slide I'm presenting here, simplified method of analysis. Before going to the modeling, uh, we can use this chart. Uh, so dead load reaction uh, linearly increase uh, with the span. Um, you see I presented here the uh, I section, the steel plate gutter, uh, any uh, gutter and the box section. Dead load reaction for the uh, uh, light rail um, bridges is 30% higher than the highway bridges. Uh, so uh, life load reaction also linearly increases um, but becomes plateau after 30 meter of the simple span. So you see here it has become also plateau but it is increasing linearly and then a smooth transition. Uh, this is a useful uh, <coughs> chart can be used for simplified analysis. And the thermal uh, induced moment also linearly increases. You see here summer and winter um, increases with the bridge length and the stiffness and, um, of the substructure and pile foundation. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this is the example for the uh, modeling uh, with the Midas Civil. So three different element model. I presented here only one, so three span um, um, with a new girder. So 50 meter, 60 meter, and the uh, uh, 50 meter span bridge. Um, uh, I use the soil spring. As I said, my previous slide, I use the linear uh, spring um, because I understand that the uh, uh, pile um, will not deform much, uh, say below five meter or say three meter based on couple of iteration. But here we can uh, basically um, do some iteration to increase the, uh, reduce the basically uh, second stiffness uh, to um, change the pile stiffness. And these are the compression only abutment spring uh, in both sides. And we have to have the casing. That's why <clears throat> this is a freestanding height. So uh, there is no uh, soil spring in this location. And this is the 3D um, view of the wireframe of this uh, model. Now, um, 
um, the Spring support using the MIDAS Civil. So MIDAS Civil has um, four type of uh, Spring support. So point spring, um, as I said um, previously, I use the point spring support uh, in my model, but um, that is your judgment call. Uh, well, we go the point spring or the um, multilinear spring. So um, now major category is the point spring and the surface spring. Uh, Midas has also the <clears throat> feature for the surface spring, so we can provide the soil type uh, and basically it automatically convert the surface spring to the point spring. But this is a one way task. So when we change the soil type, uh, you have to again either uh, redo this task or um, uh, you have to calculate um, the um, point spring manually in a spreadsheet and change it <coughs> manually or using the um, uh, table so there is a nice feature in Midas Civil uh, so you can export data from the um, to the excel sheet and update and put it back to the excel sheet so that you can <coughs> automatically update um, your point spring Midas spring uh, Midas Civil also has a general spring um, uh, general spring support feature so in that case we can introduce a uh, custom spring uh, if needed um, based on the uh, stiffness matrix and another beautiful feature is the um, uh, abutment spring and the pile spring is an integral abutment spring support so we can provide the um, uh, some geotechnical properties and my industry will automatically uh, generate the um, multilinear uh, spring uh, <clears throat> but if we change the geotechnical property you have to redo again so and that you have to keep in mind uh, and the spring type has linear compression only and the tension only. So in abutment, we use the compression only spring and um, um, uh, we can use the linear spring or multilinear spring uh, for the for the uh, pile. So as I said, uh, say for example, this line around five meter below, I <clears throat> in all cases, I use the linear spring, but I iterate uh, uh, at the top if I see the um, uh, uh, the deformation is more than this uh, this point, for example, this point, and then uh, uh, we we go another second second stiffness and then uh, change it there. But probably in the higher depth, for example, in 25 meter depth, we don't need to change because the deformation will be very low somewhere uh, in this location around uh, five millimeter or 10 millimeter. So we don't basically don't need to change. So that is uh, to me is much simpler to go with the linear spring instead of the multilinear spring approach. So this is the Midas Civil um, um, spring support uh, classification. But uh, if um, 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 the geotechnical engineer or the design requirement, uh, if we have to use the um, L-pile uh, result, then that is a little bit um, uh, cumbersome process. But Midas Civil has a uh, MCT command. It's called Midas Civil text command, which is very useful. So we can basically generate this um, uh, soil spring based on the um, uh, L-pile result provided by the geotechnical engineer. So how to do that? We can uh, go to the um, tab, uh, Midas tab tools, and then MCT command cell and copy and paste uh, uh, text from the Excel. That basically I, I created with um, Excel has some very beautiful command. We can um, um, arrange this based on the format, uh, MCT command format. So what is the MCT command format? So this command format, it has to be in the line one. So command uh, command is uh, the force dash deformation function uh, uh, to write uh, uh, at, the, at the front. And then uh, line one for the uh, function name and function type, either it is symmetrical or non-symmetrical, and the uh, ID of the spring. So for example, so line one, this is, uh, I call it the A1, about print one spring name. And then it, it is force or moment. It is definitely force uh, deformation. So I call the function type force. And then is it symmetrical? Yes, it is symmetrical. And then ID, that means the ID number of the, uh, of the spring. And then, um, then in the second line, we have to basically provided the uh, ordinate x y x2 y2 x3 y3 and so on so when we arrange this one just copy and paste um, uh, this uh, text 
to the um, uh, MCT command cell and then click run. Then this um, uh, function will be automatically uh, generated. And the next step is how to assign this uh, function to the uh, to the pile uh, node. Uh, we can also do it using the MCT command, but uh, I see it is very easy to do it using the um, uh, Midas um, uh, table. So first we can uh, assign one spring manually in a node uh, and then open the um, uh, point spring if we go to this um, uh, tree menu and open one of the um, point spring support table and then copy and paste uh, that table to the Excel sheet. Uh, this is the copy and paste in the Excel sheet and then uh, you modify it. So like uh, the um, spring type is multilinear and then this is the node number. So we have to arrange the node number accordingly and then um, in uh, all all has to be zero here and then um, uh, direction of the vector uh, is, and then provide the function name here and then we can copy this uh, table from excel back to the, um, the midas table and then it will be automatically uh, assigned all of this function uh, to the model this is very very beautiful feature so uh, and midas um, helpline are very um, cooperative so if you have any question you can um, open a ticket and they can uh, provide you the response right away now uh, the result and discussion uh, so uh, as you see um, the uh, desired flexibility of fully integral abutment can be achieved uh, irrespective of the material and the section uh, and uh, up to 55 meter long fully integral abutment bridge supported on HP pile can be built for highway bridges but more than that we cannot use the HP pile uh, this length is reduced to 40 meter if we go with the LRT bridge because the LRT bridge uh, is um, heavier 33 percent heavier than the highway bridges so this is been reduced to 40 meter so so this is a limitation for the HP pile. We cannot go beyond that. So, but we can build the up to, for example, 200 meter length uh, integral abutment bridges. So what we'll do? So we have to go to the other option. So larger than designated piles defined in the CHBDC are required to build uh, 55 to 200 meter long fully integral abutment bridges for both highway and uh, uh, LRT bridges. And you see here, here in the top is the um, uh, demand to capacity ratio. Uh, and this is the our uh, unit line so uh, up to um, 55 5 meter uh, and 40 meter for the LRT bridges those are green but beyond that uh, all are um, uh, uh, red red mark that means it doesn't work but if we use the um, uh, concrete pile you see this is the um, uh, actual um, and moment curvature uh, actual and uh, moment interaction diagram all the dots are inside the uh, interaction diagram. That means uh, capacity wise, it is definitely uh, adequate. Uh, definition of the IBs uh, by the code. So as, uh, this is the CHBD definition. Uh, so integral abutment bridges are single or multi-span continuous deck bridge with a superstructure integrally connected to flexible abutment. This is perfect. Uh, a cyclic joint is provided to end of the approach slab that are integrally connected to the deck. So that is that is good. But when they are defining the flexible abutment, that is, is a very limited definition. Uh, the flexible abutment is an abutment supported on a single row of steel H piles or steel tubular, tubular unfilled piles not exceeding uh, one feet diameter uh, or three or two millimeter diameter of the pile. So that is basically restricting the designer to move forward. But in ASHTO, the definition is much more broader. Uh, in, um, ASHTO is saying integral abutments are uh, rigidly, monolithically um, uh, attached to the superstructure and are supported on a spread or deep foundation uh, capable of um, permitting necessary horizontal movements. That is a very, uh, very open ended uh, definition. And integral abutments shall be designed to resist or absorb deep shrinkage and thermal definition of the super structure. That is the, basically the key um, to the designer. So designer is responsible to accommodate this kind of deformation and there should be a um, option uh, and a freedom to the designer to do so. And Eurocode is uh, very open. It says integral abutment that is connected to the deck without any uh, movement joint. This is very simple definition. 
Now, the consequence of unclear code uh, definition. This is one of the example uh, in a bit design concept. Um, uh, a, a, a concrete board pile was used, but because of the definition, uh, unclear definition by the code, we are not able to uh, move forward in the final design uh, of this bridge. But uh, on the other hand, in BC, <coughs> BCMOT, they did not follow the CHBDC uh, definition. They have their uh, own uh, um, definition. So um, in BC, the recently this bridge was built. It's a three-span bridge and supported on the uh, two feet diameter uh, uh, steel pile filled with the concrete. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, conclusion and recommendation. <clears throat> this study shows that uh, uh, fully integral abutment with one meter diameter CIP uh, concrete pile is the best solution for 40 meter to 200 meter long integral bridges for a structural life cycle cost durability and aesthetic perspective but this concept is currently not complete compliant with the chbdc plus 6.2 because this fully integral abutment type is not supported by uh, steel h pile uh, the author believed that the court should not prevent the designer from using uh, uh, other pile types unless safety and durability as defined by the code are compromised and then um, hereby the author would like to define a fully integral or um, pin connected semi-integral abutment as an abutment type that is supported on a single row of steel pile or concrete or composite piles that provides adequate flexibility and strength to carry the loads. In contrast, semi-integral abutment with bearings shall be relatively rigid and supported on two or more rows of piles to resist bending and shear from active uh, uh, soil pressure in addition to vertical loads. The possibility for to further develop and improve integral bridges should not be restrained by a strict definition imposed by the code. Therefore, uh, instead, the performance-based design approach should be used to meet functionality, serviceability, durability, and safety provision of the code. Yeah, so that is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for your patience. Now the floor is open uh, for questions. Thank you so much, Mohammed. <clears throat> we do have a couple of questions. Um, the first one says, a well-known issue with jointless bridges is the ratcheting effect caused by the uh, cycl cyclic interaction of the abutment wall and backfill, which can result in significant increase in passive pressure over the time backfill settlement and redistribution of the earth pressure with the depth. Um, a standard PY curve does not account for this long-term effect. Is there an established approach to take this into account? Uh, yeah, very good question. So uh, basically, is a cyclic movement is one of the issues. So that cyclic movement, um, uh, uh, especially for the steel pile, we can we can co consider uh, the cyclic movement in, in a uh, fatigue check, uh, and uh, most of the cases it, it pass. Uh, so uh, and as I said, uh, one of my previous slide. Uh, so um, so maybe I can share that slide. Uh, So if you see here, um, because of the cyclic movement, uh, we, we can end up with the uh, permanent uh, gap here. Uh, and then um, uh, this gap <coughs> can be accommodated by the uh, summer uh, movement. So, but in, in some cases, the summer movement is larger than this gap, definitely it will be restrained by the soil. But uh, as you see here, basically the main, main uh, uh, issue for the cyclic loading. Uh, for the steel pile, and definitely we can accommodate this one. And the PY curve is considered uh, in the design. As I said, uh, we we can simplify the PY curve uh, to um, um, to accommodate um, uh, this movement. Uh, and definitely up to 200 meter bridge, uh, we can comfortably design the integral abutment bridges. Nowadays, we have very uh, sophisticated tools. It's not a major problem to accommodate the cyclic load um, throughout the lifetime of his structure um, uh, performance. 
Okay, the next question asks, do you always include abutment springs in non-seismic load cases or no? For braking forces or thermal movements, do you include abutment springs? And what would you do for modal analysis? Yes, we, we, we always use the abutment spring, uh, uh, compression only abutment spring uh, in, our, in, in our analysis, because if we do not use the abutment spring, uh, we'll, uh, we'll lose the uh, axial force effect on the superstructure. So that is, uh, that is uh, very important, but um, uh, definitely superstructure is supposed to carry that load, but um, if um, the backfill soil is very rigid, then we'll end up with very high axial uh, force effect on the superstructure, and that must be uh, captured uh, during the analysis. Yeah, and yes, uh, the abutment spring must be considered uh, in the model. And uh, it, uh, when you do the model analysis, it is automatically uh, captured uh, in this um, in the model analysis as well. Okay. <clears throat> the next question asks, what is the P multiplier applied to the PY curve used for the abutment wall? The reference PY curves were developed for single circular piles. Some assumptions or modifications need to be made to use them to model interaction for a wall. Yes, exactly. So we have to use the P multiplier and then usually the geotechnical engineer recommended us to use the P multiplier, whether we can use um, from their raw data or uh, geotechnical engineer also may provide um, the after P multiplier uh, with the L file analysis data and give it to us. So both way we can uh, capture the P multiplier uh, for a different kind of piles. Okay, and the next question asks, what is the max single span integral what is yeah? What is the max single span integral abutment bridge? Uh, single span. Um, uh, my experience, I design up to uh, forty-five uh, meter span. We can definitely go up to fifty meters to with the steel gutter, but for the peak case, pre stress and new gutter, uh, we can comfortably go with forty-five meter. Okay, uh, next question says, thank you very much for the informative presentation. I have a question with regards to the design of flexible piles for the integral bridges. Can you comment on the consideration of P delta effect for large horizontal movements due to seismic loads? Yes, very good question. Yeah, so um, definitely P delta effect has been uh, has to be considered uh, due to the very large seismic load, and then um, the, the integral abutment bridges, uh, uh, as I just uh, described previously, uh, the that is the abutment spring is the key. So we don't expect the embankment uh, does not uh, or will not collapse uh, during the seismic event. That means the when we have the abutment spring, we don't expect large longitudinal movement. Um, so uh, the P delta effect will be very minimum. But uh, as I said, in other option like uh, isolated integral abutment bridges, um, we do not have the backfill soil. So in that case, we can expect the large longitudinal movement uh so definitely p delta effect is one of the check so in uh, canadian court and as to also have a basically the 30 percent rule which is basically uh 30 percent longitudinal plus 100 percent transverse or 100 percent transverse plus 30 percent uh, longitudinal or uh, based on the uh, p delta effect uh, whichever is the uh, govern so most of the cases the 30 percent rule govern so basically the p delta effect automatically covered in this load combination Thank you. Thank you. And then the next question asks, what is your assumption regarding the embedment of the steel, cap, steel casing concrete filled piles to concrete piled caps with say about 100 to 150 mm embedded of the casing? Do you assume full moment capacity of the composite section or uh, and the resulting stiffness from that, or do you reduce the amount? Yeah, very, very good question. <laughs> so, um, uh, we usually we um, if we do not uh, want the capacity, uh, we uh, 100 millimeter uh, embedment is good enough. But 
100 millimeter embedment will not provide adequate capacity if we uh, consider the steel casing. For example, in this bridge uh, in BC, we have to consider the seismic load and we found and the uh, client do not want the plastic hinges um, below the ground. So uh, we had only one option to utilize the um, uh, full capacity of the casing. So basically we embedded a full capacity of the casing uh, um, around um, uh, half a, uh, 750 millimeter inside the, um, inside the abutment. It depends upon the design. And we provided some kind of um, uh, um, steel um, uh, uh, to make it a uh, welded um, uh, stud to make it a composite uh, composite effect to the to the abutment and then we basically was to uh, able uh, we are able to keep the um, uh, bridge in elastic in extreme event even 24 75 year event uh, so it depends upon your uh, uh, design demand so uh, if you want to um, um, use the full capacity as i uh, compare in uh, one of the slide uh, uh, here you see the capacity is significantly increased. So this, uh, for example, 16 pile, uh, this is uh, without uh, steel, and this is basically the example from that that bridge. So you see the our demand, the blue blue dot is outside of the capacity. Basically, it doesn't work. Uh, so then we basically uh, introduce or uh, add this steel casing around the pile, and then you see the the bridge is uh, completely working and remain elastic without forming a plastic hinge uh, in extreme seismic event. So it depends upon your demand. Uh, you can uh, embed this steel casing inside the abutment or um, not to do that, depend upon the situation. Thank you. Okay, sorry, I was muted. <laughs> um, the next question asks, how do you include the nonlinear springs in an elastic static model? Do you need to use time history analysis for seismic loads? Uh, it depends upon, again, the code requirements. So, for example, if it is the performance category three, uh, irregular bridge, uh, lifeline bridge, for example, in CHBDC, we need nonlinear time history analysis. And in that case, uh, I would recommend to use the nonlinear spring at first a couple of meter, depend upon your in initial analysis, and use the linear spring below because it is unnecessary to provide the uh, nonlinear spring throughout the length of the pile. It's time consuming uh, and the runtime of the model will be higher. Uh, so try to avoid that and use only the nonlinear spring at the top of the pile which location is basically the pile movement is exiting that uh, that the um, uh, uh, plateau point okay and then the next question asks when comparing fully integral versus semi-integral bridges which ones perform better seismically uh, so um Performance wise, we can go uh, get the similar performance uh, um, for both cases, depends upon the designing. Uh, but I personally recommend to go with the fully integral abutment bridge because it's jointless bridge, uh, maintenance free bridge, so almost maintenance free bridge. So, comfortably, we can design this bridge in, even in a high seismic zone uh, up to um, 200 meter length. Uh, and uh, I presented another option that isolated abutment. That is another uh, good option because in seismic zone, we don't allow any plastic hinge um, below the ground. So in that case, isolated integral abutment uh, could be a, uh, could be a good good choice uh, for the uh, for the designer. Uh, yeah, so this one. <laughs> Okay, and then the next question says, great presentation. In your opinion, why is CHBDC being rigid on its requirements to support fully integral abutment bridges only on flexible steel piles? And how can we engineers drive the code panel to reconsider this constraint? Yeah, very good question. That is actually my question as well, because I face uh, as a practical um, problem during uh, designing of the bridge uh, in a final stage, because in the bid design, um, 
uh, I proposed a, a full integral abutment with the concrete pile because the HP pile was not working. Uh, mm, I don't know how it's come from, but um, probably a mistake. I talked with some uh, bridge committee um, uh, people, uh, top level people, when I was presenting this uh, presentation in a short and medium span bridge in, um, in Toronto in 2022. They, they, they agree that they need to do something and revise this definition and keep it open for the designer. Okay. Um, next question says, passive pressure behind the abutment is a function of movement. How reliable are linear springs to capture force effects in superstructure and substructure? Uh, yeah, passive force is, is basically nonlinear. Uh, non That's why uh, in, in Caltrans, you see here in this table, they basically classified in different uh, category. But uh, definitely, we can use the nonlinear spring directly um, uh, as an abutment spring. But as I said, if we go multilinear um, spring, the model is becomes heavy. But you can do our judgment if the deformation within this range we can use, uh, say, for example, uh, 15,000 kPa uh, with a zero deformation or, say, for 5,000 kPa per meter with a uh, 25 millimeter deformation or the other number um, proposed by the geotechnical engineer. Uh, yeah, so definitely we should capture the uh, actual uh, behavior based on the passive force effect uh, in, the, in the model. Okay, and the final question we have for today says, in the case of piles with steel pipes, how is the composite action between the steel pipe and the concrete ensured? Uh, yeah, good question. Uh, so actually, uh, it is not a fully composite action because we cannot provide any start inside the steel pile. So it is a basically a uh, capacity of the concrete and the steel together. Uh, so I think Ash2 and CHBDC, they both has their um, empirical formula to, to calculate the actual um, demand of the um, concrete fill steel tube. Okay, actually one more question. No <laughs> <Sorry>. problem. <laughs> Last one. Um, can you also comment on the cost implications of, of the substructure for using integral and semi-integral especially for long bridges yes definitely integral will be much more economical because when you go to the semi integral it's just uh, for example in a, in a, um, a simply supported uh, condition in a single span bridge we have to have a deeper deeper garter so when you go deeper garter that means the cost of the garter is higher and when you go the deeper garter which is basically the more weight uh, so that means the increase the foundation cost so I always um, go with the uh, integral uh, uh, bridges based, uh, which is uh, very good in um, uh, lifetime cost effective and the performance wise. So definitely always integral bridge will, will win compared to the same integral abutment and conventional abutment bridges. Okay, that concludes our session. Mohammed, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Luciana, and thank you so much, uh, the audience. I hope you enjoyed it, and I believe you will be able to convince yourself to go with the internal bridges next time. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Um, if anybody has any additional questions or any questions that we missed, um, please feel free to email us at hello at midasoft.com, um, and we will share those with Mohammed. Um, but yeah, everybody have a great day, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.